Good evening, everyone. I'm John Delano, the president of the Dennis Theater Foundation, and I want to welcome you to this very special Pittsburgh Perspectives program, where we're going to have an opportunity to answer all your questions, or as many as we can, about the relationship between the Dennis Theater Foundation and our new collaboration partnership with Row House Cinemas and Brian Mendelson, who is the principal owner of Row House. This is an opportunity for us to answer a number of questions that were posed by those of you who have signed up. And we're gonna to try to get through as many questions as possible this evening. Uh, I'm gonna suggest that we're gonna go in some sort of order. We've taken all the questions that we got online and we've kind of grouped them together. So there's gonna be a little bit of rhyme and reason to how we respond to these questions. But if we're on a topic area and we're not answering the question you have, use the Q&A function. That's what it's there for. And we'll read the question out and hopefully try to answer it as best we can. Once again, I wanna just thank everybody for being here and for joining in this opportunity to learn more about the partnership between the Dennis Theater Foundation and Row House Cinema. Uh, I also want to send a very special thanks to Brian Mendelson for giving time tonight to uh, join us and to uh, help us understand more about Row House and about some of the exciting programming that we're looking forward to delivering to the greater Pittsburgh community through the Dennis Theater in uh, Mount Lebanon. So. I want to begin, uh, Brian, if I may, uh, with a pretty basic question, because although those who are really involved in theater are uh, have some idea of what Row House is all about, there are many people who may not have had the pleasure of going to one of your theater, to your theater, or to one of your other operations that you've done uh, through your development company. So, Brian, let me just start off with the first basic question, which is. What is Row House? <laughs> thank you, John. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for that introduction. Uh, so Row House Cinema is a single screen movie theater we built in 2014 in Lawrenceville. It was not a theater originally. We uh, created it from scratch within an old historic building from the 1860s. Um, that was one of our first um, retail operations we've done. Um, our company, we've done other things as well. Wildcard in Lawrenceville was our first. Um, I'm no longer involved with that, but I did co-found it. And then uh, we have Fulton Commons, which is on the north side, which is a co-working space, a shared kitchen. And the Lawrenceville Market House is um, in Lawrenceville as well, which is um, a retail cafe, donut shop, and a Smashburger restaurant, among other things. And then, um, and then if recently we just acquired the Hollywood Theater in Dormont. So Row House, you know, specifically is um, 84 seats. So it's a really small, kind of adorable state-of-the-art theater uh, that has a lot of soul to it. So we we don't do what other theaters do. We kind of do our own thing. And it's been working out very well. We've been profitable since 2016. Um, and our staff has expanded. Uh, we've done more and more each year. And we show about 200, 250 films each year. Uh, so we have a lot of fun at it and um, yeah. looking forward to what, you know, we can do in Lawrenceville, see what we can do in Mount Lebanon. Well, we're very excited to be partnering with uh, Brian and his team at Row House. Um, as many of you know, and we're going to address some of these questions, the Dennis Theater Foundation has been around for more than a decade and a half and was really founded by a number of very good and well-meaning citizens uh, in order to purchase the Dennis Theater uh, when it went dark and essentially to prevent the building of another pharmacy, drugstore, you name it, in uh, uptown Mount Lebanon. The idea being that there was a role for theater in Mount Lebanon and, and the, the original folks behind saving the Dennis were very much in, involved in that. The, the whole history of this, and I want to get into this because I want to talk about the plan and what it is that we hope to do with uh, with uh, Row House. Uh, the history of, of this whole operation is essentially one in which funds were raised to acquire the building and then to preserve the building, to gut the building primarily. There's some structural stuff in there. 
but there's no seats, there's no screens, there's no none of the stuff. And to preserve the building uh, over the years, over the many years, and it's been a, an expensive proposition to do that. And we'll talk about money a little bit later. Uh, but we've had a we have a new direction with the board and with I coming on board as president a couple of years ago. It was pretty clear to me that it was time for us to move forward. We were either going to have a theater there or we're not. And so my view and the view of our new board was essentially we needed a partner. We needed somebody who knew about theaters and who had a vision, who shared our vision for what could happen at the dentist, not just for one community, but for the larger community. And Brian's gonna talk a little bit about that shortly because this is intended to be a destination theater, not a neighborhood theater, but a destination theater where folks from all over will want to experience something very unique and not offered elsewhere uh, throughout the Pittsburgh region. Um, so we had a number of questions, uh, Jacinta, Bill, and others asked questions about what's the plan? What's going to happen? And let me start real quick, and then I'll turn it over to Brian to talk a little more about what the plan is going forward. The bottom line is that the Dennis Theater Foundation, a nonprofit 501c3, will continue to own this building on behalf of the community. This is a community-owned building through the foundation, and we will continue to do that. We will sign a lease uh, with Row House that essentially gives them a long-term lease to operate the theater. And Brian will describe exactly what will be in that theater in the years to come. We will also have an arrangement with Row House so that the foundation, the Dennis Theater Foundation can continue to do some of the superb programming that we've been doing over the years. A lot of it has been online, um, but we'll talk a little bit more about some of that in a few moments. But the fact is that programming is very important and I wanna focus a little bit on what the dentist is going to continue to do as your community foundation in support of this theater. Um, but uh, with that, uh, Brian, tell us a little bit about how this theater, what is it gonna look like inside when people walk in off Washington Road? Um, later this fall, we hope to share some artistic renderings of, this, uh, of the vision. But share with us now so everybody can understand what's the vision of the new Dennis. Yeah, absolutely. So um, originally this theater, I mean, it's a historic theater and the building was massive. It was the, a huge lobby going down to this auditorium that held 1,200, 1,500 seats. I don't even know how many. Um, I've never seen a number, but it's, it's over a thousand. And over the years, I'm sure if people have memories of this theater in the 80s and um, in the 90s, you it's been what was called twin, like literally a wall down the middle. And then it was balcony, which is taking the balcony and separating into another theater. And then there was the lobby. I don't, there's not even a term for it, where the lobby had a lobby built, built on top of it with another screen up there. Um, to compete with the multiplexes, they chopped it up and tried to do the best they can. And through, you know, so we're, we're left with this interesting template of, all right, so what do we do with this now? Uh, so the structure is still there for the theater above the lobby, and we're going to take advantage of that with two smaller screens. Uh, so that will be screen two and screen three. So total, there'll be three screens. So each of those two screens will have 62 seats. They'll be very, very modern, um, a little stark modern in a way that is very interesting, very captivating. Um, they'll, there'll be like a little lobby in front of that that will also have bathrooms and there'll be an elevator to it. And then there'll be also this uh, balcony. It will be kind of going over uh, kind of like a, almost like a greenhouse effects where you could see Mount Lebanon and uh, the, the main street there, Washington. So you'll be able to go out into it and look around and kind of feel connected to, to the original, um, to the community. Um, so th that's kind of the secondary area, and because the, the rest of it gets more and more exciting. So um, when you walk in, you'll have a choice either going upstairs or downstairs. 
Uh, when you go downstairs, that's the main area. So when you go downstairs, you'll kind of go down this grand staircase to this really high ceiling lobby area that's going to have a restaurant, a lounge in it. Um, that is kind of reminiscent of a very um, beautiful hotel from the 1920s. Um, in fact, from a design perspective, um, I think the biggest influence is um, this architect or designer named Urban. He was Austrian, uh, famous for his Art Deco works. That name might sound familiar to some of you who have been to the Weston William Penn. Uh, there's the Urban Room, which is named after him. He designed it. Uh, if you go in there, which I just was there yesterday, uh, it is uh, something different. It's this beautiful Art Deco um, 1920s feel that's just elegant. And when I think about what will work in Mount Lebanon, what will separate this theater from other theaters, what will separate the restaurant from other restaurants, it's really about being elegant yet accessible. Uh, so it almost has like a hotel lounge feel to it. So you can walk through it, still feel part of it. It doesn't feel like you're walking through a restaurant, but it's there and you see it, it's exciting. And then you go down uh, the lobby, and you continue to the main the main theater. The main theater will house about 300 seats uh, in a new stadium format. So um, the way it was flat on the bottom, there's a balcony here. So we're going to take from the balcony, kind of draw a line down and create more of a stadium seat uh, modeled after the Cinerama in Seattle, where it is just this big open space. The acoustics are amazing. The presentation is amazing. Um, and it will have this very... Um, classy modern uh, feel to it, which I really like. So we're not trying to recreate anything historic, but at the same time, it's going to uh, feel like it was something out of the 1920s with a modern twist to it. In that 300 screen theater, um, that will have um, a green room, a small stage, um, some lighting, stuff like that. So the idea behind that is not only will it be primarily a movie theater, but we're able to do events in there too. Um, and I know one of the questions was about live theater. I would say that's not really the um, that's not really the best place for it because it won't have an area for sets. But small concerts, lectures, comedy shows, uh, community events, things like that are absolutely possible in there. And we're going to design the technology to allow for that. Um, but also, you know, we're showing a movie, and someone wants to give a lecture about the movie, they will have that as well. So that. That's really the summary of um, the programming and what we're kind of looking feel of the of the space. Uh, one other room we left out. Uh, let's be sure to mention it, Brian. Is the community room, which is very important because uh, from the foundation standpoint, we want this to be a place where folks in the community can have access to a room for programming of the programs of their own. Um, uh, different parts of the theater might be available as well. That will depend again on Row House and the programming that it's doing and, and what we may be doing in one of the other theaters. But the community room is very important. Um, we don't have really the space in Uptown to gather as many people as we want. And we think the dentist can provide that opportunity. I'm going to move on to some programming questions, but uh, we have some questions that have been posted. So I wanna make sure we get to them. Um, and again, I'm I'm not going to duck any of these questions. We want to answer questions hard, soft, whatever they are, as best we can. Um, so, is Row House nonprofit or for profit? We are for profit. Yes, you are. And but we, we are see not. ourselves as yeah, we see ourselves as an arts organization, but we are for profit. Yes, and we are not. We are five hundred one c three. We have consulted with attorneys on this to make sure that the arrangements that we have with Row House are perfectly consistent with our 501c3 tax status, the ability. We will own the building. We will own the assets. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about raising money because I know that's another big question in a few minutes. But bottom line is that there are plenty of models for nonprofits to work with for-profits in the theater world. And uh, we're going to we'll make this work. That was one of the, the questions. Another question, um, how big will the screen in screen one be? Will it be 70 or 35 millimeter? And this is something that really kind of excites me because Brian Mendelson wants to be able to show all kinds of film, which means that 
from the old silent films to the films of the 40s and 50s to the brand new films. I mean, I don't know movie technology, but he does. And this is why it's such a great partnership because Brian, tell us what this is gonna be. What, what are you gonna be able to show there? Sure, uh, the main screen will, have, will be about 50 feet wide, uh, which is quite large. Um, it's not IMAX or anything like that, but it's gonna be um, extremely good, extremely like good quality projector. It's gonna be a 4K laser projector, um, 35 lumen, thousand lumens, if that means anything. Uh, we will have 35 and 70 millimeter capabilities. Um, in fact, a project I was working on this week is to automate VCR. So we are working on uh, a project with an automation company to be able to get a VCR to automatically play when we wanted to. So um, we'll be doing a wide range of formats that we'll have the technology for. Um, that, that to me is enables all kinds of uh, creativity in the programming. Um, everything like you're like VHS, why would you want to watch that on a 50 foot screen? Because cult movies are better that way. Um, but if you're watching Lawrence of Arabia, you want to watch it in 70 millimeter and, you know, your local um, name brand uh, multiplex will not be able to do that, but we will. I really want to see Ben-Hur. It's been a long time since I've seen Ben-Hur. <laughs> that was quite an epic. I think it was in the late 50s, was it? I think that's it. I don't know that I saw it at the dentist. I think I saw it downtown at the Warner or one of those theaters that operated by, down there. By the way, just I meant to say that the first question it came from Nancy. The second question came from Zach. Uh, the next question comes from Ed. Will the main theater have reclining seats? Ed likes to know. No. Uh, so I do not see this as uh, um, similar to what's happening. The, the trend in theaters right now is to have food in your seat with a table and a massive recliner locked off from other people that's not the experience we want to create um, it's actually the opposite of the experience we want to create so we we feel that they're i mean they're going to be beautiful big seats that are uh you know luxurious uh that would have been put into theaters five six years ago before recliners became the trend but we will you know i feel that having a community and a sense of uh, an audience around you is important to enjoy what you're watching. And that that's why you're coming to the theater. You're coming for an experience. You're coming for an entertainment. You're not coming to recreate the living room. Because if you want to, re why would you want to recreate the living room when the living room is already good? Um, so we are trying to create a whole new experience that you can't get in your living room. Fair enough. Uh, Pete is asking about the specs of the community room. I don't know that we have those yet, unless you have Something. Um, some of them. So it will be um under like a, the th the main theaters like this. It's the space that's going to be underneath that. Right. Um, so it's about fifty feet by fifty feet. Um, it will that's have good size. Um, yeah, it's a good size. It'll have um a screen in there. Um, kind of like a projector and some some technology like that. So it's not meant to watch um a studio film, but you're able to you know have uh, a lecture. We just watch a movie if. A, the school wants to come in and watch a movie and have a teacher teach about it. It's meant for stuff like that. It will also work for parties, birthday parties, rentals, things like that, or um, uh, an event before the main screen, uh, things like that. Gotcha. Good. Um, we've got a lot of questions about programming. We've answered some of them, but uh, Lina, Pete, Tom, Robin, Dan, Michael, Mark, I mean, all kinds of questions. So I'm going to try to read a couple of them and sort of summarize these. Um, somebody's asking about local film festivals. Will you be able to collaborate and to make to be using these, this facility for film festivals? Well, why don't I stop there and just get a quick answer from you rather than read a whole bunch of questions? So, film festivals, very much that will be very doable, won't it? Oh, absolutely. So, we work at our little theater in Lawrenceville, we work with six film festivals, we host two of them ourselves. Um, the next week starts the Real Q Film Festival. On Friday night, we had the Aretha Film Festival. So it's something we do all the time, and we we love it. it it's a uh, heart and soul of um, independent film. Right. I think you already answered this, um, but visual arts, poetry, other spoken forms of arts, uh, performing arts. I mean, there's a difference. We're not going to be able to put on plays. Lord, because the, the theater, if you go and you see the, the old dentist never had a backstage. 
and and to do all that we want to do, we're not going to be able to do that. But there's no reason why someone can't give a lecture or or a poetry reading or any of those forms of artistic expression, right, Brian? That's correct. Yeah. Um, will there be, uh, and this was also the similar question about live theater, we're not gonna be able to put on musicals and things like that. That's not gonna be that this type. Um, what type of charity events and nonprofit screenings will you be able to host? Well, first of all, the dentist is gonna host some of that because that kind of falls within our parameter of what we will want to do. But uh, nothing precludes Brian from doing that either, right? Yeah, and uh, just to be clear about that, um, part of our, our lease agreement with the dentist is to enable the dentist theater to do programming uh, that they choose as well. So we're going to act as their resource uh, for them to do their programming as well. Uh, right. But for other nonprofits, I mean, we work with, uh, tons of groups as it is um, right now, and we have no reason why we wouldn't continue that relationship. Um, everything from um, doing an intro, um, picking a film and having a, a, um, a panel discussion about it, to um, a film festival and things like that. Yeah, and that's part of what we'll do as well, and I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, another one of the questions, the types of films to be shown, you may have addressed this, but you're, you're you are very eclectic in the films that you show. And I think you've already suggested that we could see everything from the 1920s silent films all the way up to the first run movies. Is that right? Yeah, and just the thank you for bringing that, that, that transition for me to plug the Pittsburgh Silent Film Festival, uh, which is this weekend. Um, one of the screenings being held by the dentists at Row House, at the, uh, not at the Hollywood. Lindsay, all of the theaters around the city are participating. Um, so should participate in that this weekend but nonetheless um yeah we're going to show everything from uh movies that um have come out in the 1920s and 1910s to brand new releases um so to explain brand, brand new releases will we show the latest marvel movie likely no maybe i would i would maybe i would have showed barbie just because you know like you know everyone was going to make money off of that but that's not really our our cup of tea um you know sometimes you got to pay the bills but it's i think for a new release we kind of see ourselves more in the art house world and independent world where a wes anderson film would be kind of as big as we would go um and then you know what and the the fact that we have two smaller screens will help us show smaller films and more independent foreign films things like that um, and allows us to uh, move through more films quicker um, and it will have three theaters right so we'll have Lawrenceville we'll have the Hollywood and then we'll have um, be running the Dennis so we'll well let me oh, is that, Zach just popped a question up which I do want to ask you since you mentioned the Hollywood how will programming be differentiated between the Hollywood and the dentist, the very different uh, theaters. Yeah, I think over time um, that will evolve as the, the neighborhoods and the crowds will be different. Um, on a high level, we kind of see Lawrenceville continuing to do what we are doing with uh, these weekly themes, where we, if you're unfamiliar, uh, we take a, a theme like um, a couple of weeks ago was um, Sandworm, Sandworm Cinematic Universe. We showed four films based off of Sandworms, uh, Tremors, things like that. And then this week we have Precode. So four films that are uh, before Hollywood had 30 years of censorship in it. Uh, so, you know, that's Lawrence. So Dormont, I kind of see as a little bit edgier, a little bit more poor, a little more anime, a little more punk. Um, the look and feel of the place is going to be that way. Uh, the programming is going to reflect that. And then in the Hollywood and the Dennis Theater, I kind of see it a little bit more, uh, not traditional art house, but a little bit um, more focused on independent films, foreign films, um, some you know studio cinema that is fits into that same kind of genre. Um, you know, good examples of that from other theaters would be like the Lost Cinema, uh, Nashville that has a, an amazing cinema, and then um, not locally, but in Pennsylvania, the Bryn Mawr Cinema are kind of examples of what I would say the Dennis Theater would be programmed like, where the Hollywood, if you're familiar with other theaters, the music box is kind of in Chicago's kind of um, cup of tea or the Frida Cinema in, in Orange County. Right, great. 
Great. Um, Mark asked uh, the question of what is the dentist programming going to look like? And I can answer that question um, because the dentist uh, does remain committed uh, to provide quality independent and foreign films. That's kind of where, and classic movies as well, documentaries. Those are the kinds of films that through our arrangement with Row House, we will have access to a theater to do the kinds of programming that we, and, the, and films that we'd like to do. Um, as you know, we've had some popular programs in recent years, Real to Real, uh, which provides movies and then discussion after the movies. That's part of why a community room is so important to us uh, so that we can see a film and either in the community room or then exit to a community room where with uh, some of our, our great professionals like Elaine Wertheim and others who are quite knowledgeable about film uh, would lead discussions and about the film that you, we had just watched. As you know, we have uh, a Meet Me at the Movies program uh, is designed for those with memory loss, with Alzheimer's. We've had some funding for that in, in years past. It's a, there's a, quite a lot of evidence that this, that these kinds of, of older films uh, for an audience that has is suffering from some memory loss, that it's very, very uh, helpful. Um, that was Meet Me at the Movies, we called that particular program. Uh, we'll be able to do our Pittsburgh Perspectives program. This was something that I initiated when I came on board as president a couple of years ago because I wanted people to know that the dentist can be really a community asset in providing discussions, uh, panel discussions. And we brought in these wonderful experts on everything from racism to the environment, to immigration, uh, even hosted a school board debate, I think once. Uh, we've done programs with the Mount Lebanon Public Library, with the Veterans Breakfast Club. These are all things that the dentist under its on, as a foundation and the owner of the building will continue to do uh, to make available to the community. So I'm very excited about this and this is made possible because of this uh, collaboration uh, with uh, Brian and Row House. Um, all right, moving along. Uh, Brian, we get a, a comment from uh, Deborah who thinks that a, a, cabaret, a cafe would be a great idea all day long. <laughs> um, including the show times. Uh, so um, tell us more about the restaurant and the bar. What's, what's that all about? Yeah, so I mean, there, there, let's talk about the separation between the two ideas. One is um, the concession stand. So concession stand is going to be your traditional popcorn, candy, thing, soda, things of that nature. That will be there. Um, the restaurant will try to be a place where it is for both theater goers as well as an independent restaurant where um, we really hope that, you know, if you're going for lunch somewhere, you you would think of us as a place to eat lunch. They'll have a separate entrance, um, then that won't be under the marquee. And, um, but you go down the same main staircase. Um, it's it's going to be, um, you know, we don't have a cuisine specifically picked out or anything like that, but it's going to be um, both combination of appetizers kind of designed for pre stacks and, you know, pre, you know, I just need a quick bite before this mm. film or a quick bite after this film. It'll be open late because we'll be open late. We're a cinema. Um, and then, um, but also full meals. Uh, so lunch and dinner. So uh, hopefully that fulfills your wish, but that is what we're trying to do. Great. We are getting, and we have gotten questions about funding. So I do want to get into that and project cost. Um, Cheryl, among others, asked um, about the money and raising the money and must the money be raised before construction can begin. Catherine wants more information on the timing and the expected completion date. So I'll just begin by saying a couple of things. Uh, first off, as you can see, the plans for this building are quite ambitious, uh, far beyond the original plans by the folks who first saved the dentist from destruction. Uh, and I can't thank them enough and praise them enough for the work they did. Uh, but they had a, an original idea of a single screen. And that's not what this is. This is basically utilizing all three floors of the dentist theater. When I was a little boy and, and even in more recent years when the dentist was operational, you'll remember going in 
and having to go walk down a long ramp, which is totally ADA non-compliant, and meaning we can't do anything like that today. So Brian's notion, as he's described it, is basically you walk in and you will take an elevator or a grand staircase up or an elevator and a grand staircase down. So we're basically having three floors of operation, three floors of the building, as opposed to one floor. That's expensive to do more things. On the other hand, this is going to be a destination place, a destination entertainment center. And so our projected cost is around seven and a half million dollars in order to do that. Um, and um, I want to talk a little bit about where that money might come from. But let me ask, answer the next question that we, we get, which is um, Josh, Susan, others have asked the same question, which essentially is, um, what about the money that was previously raised? And that money was raised primarily in the early days of the Dennis Theater Foundation. And it was raised in order to purchase the building and to prepare the innards of the building, which I have mentioned, things were taken out and gutted and essentially um, hollowed out so that it's it, it can be used. But although there's a lot of, there's still work that has to be done in order to put a theater in there. Um, the end result was that approximately $2.6 million was raised uh, in order to, uh, as I understand it, in order to, to uh, move forward with the dentist, but about 2.1 million was spent. So we have about a half million dollars in the, in the kitty essentially to move forward. The money that was spent was obviously spent on a variety of things from the purchase of the building to fundraising, to staff in the early days. Now we're complete, totally volunteer. No one's being paid a penny. Um, but uh, in the early days, there was a staff that helped to raise money along with fundraising council. I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on, uh, expenditures on architects and the like. Um, and then we have our daily, our regular expenses that we continue to have. I'm gonna come back to that in a minute uh, because it's important to understand that as well. But the bottom line is that we're going to have to raise money. And the question of how are we going to raise it and when are we going to raise it is really an important part of this whole effort. Um, we believe that we our seven and a half million dollars will include about two million dollars from individual contributions uh, from individuals who have supported the dentists in the past and who we will encourage to support us in the future. Um, we're looking for perhaps a million and a half from foundations, maybe a half million from corporations. We're looking for money from government. And I'll come back to that in a second, but that's a very important part of all this. And we intend with the help of Row House to secure a mortgage on the building supported by Row House's assets. Um, we've already had serious indication of interest from a local bank uh, pending our final signed lease with Row House and pledges uh, of a predetermined amount. The bottom line is that we think this combination will allow us to raise the funds to move forward with, uh, with this project. Um, so the bottom line is that that we think the seven and a half million dollars is doable. We are going to take from now until the end of 2024 to see if that's the case. And we're going to do this not by direct contributions, but by pledges, and uh, which in which we were going to ask people to pledge money. They don't have to write a check, but they pledge money. And if we can get to the predetermined amount that we think from individuals, then we have the leverage to go and get the support that we need from the other sources. Uh, but it's important that we show that the community is able to support a project like this. And as I say, I think it's doable, but we'll know uh, because um, <laughs> to put in the, in the vernacular, uh, your board of directors, your new board, your new, your new president, moi, believes very strongly that it's time to, to blank or get off the pot. And this year is going to be the year, this coming year, 2024, will help to determine 
whether there's support in the community from government leaders and the like, um, foundations and corporations and businesses to do the exciting things that we've laid out. Now, it's also true, and we've had uh, lots of questions asking, what is Row House's contribution to this whole process? I've cited one of them, which is that Row House is going to back the mortgage because the uh, the building itself would not be sufficient to uh, so to really support a two, at least a $2 million, maybe more mortgage. Uh, that's going to require Row House's backing. Uh, but there are other ways in which Row House is going to be helpful to us in the fundraising effort. And Brian, I'll let you take it from there. Okay, thank you. Um, I would say there's kind of other than so uh, personal guaranteeing um, a very large mortgage is definitely a responsibility that um, you know I don't like to do, but it's something that's necessary for this project. Um, other ways are we're going to pledge over half a million dollars um, to when when this project comes together that we'll be chipping in as well. And then in the short term, we are uh, two things. One is we're, you know, for free, we've been working with the dentist for a while now to come up with this plan, uh, come up with logistics, financial models, things of that nature. Um, but most importantly, we're also going to be writing a check in the very near future to pay for some upfront costs. So we're going to, uh, we're going to be um, spending money on architectural fees, uh, some early engineering, things of that nature to come up with the renderings that we need to have uh, for fundraising, making sure I, I, our ideas are legitimate and doable. And then finally, uh, from a building perspective that the building will be able to handle what we wanna do. Um, so that's money we're gonna be putting out front in the, in the next six months um, with, the, you know, with the goal of um, understanding each step of the way how we're going to get to the next step and that requires money up front and that's we're committed to the project so we're willing to put it in yeah i think uh, this is very important and uh, this is a collaboration uh this is going to benefit all of us uh and the only way we make this work is that that we all see the benefit that occurs for both the foundation and the larger community and for row house and their operation uh, we've been asked the question uh, by several people about the government and the government role, uh, the government support. I, I do want to make it clear that uh, we have briefed all five commissioners in Mount Lebanon. Every single one of them has been very supportive of what we're doing because they recognize the need to bring the dentist back to life. And uh, I can't thank our elected officials enough for their support. It means a great deal. That also includes State Representative Dan Miller and State Senator Wayne Fontana. Those two gentlemen are going to be absolutely key. Uh, oh, and I might add County Executive Rich Fitzgerald. Of course, he's on his way out of office, but uh, he's been briefed on this, and we are uh, excited to have their help because we're going to need their help for government funding uh, that we think is an important component to this. Uh, so that's uh, very much appreciated. Um, we have had support from a uh, anonymous foundation over the years. Uh, we're hoping that we could get more funding from them, but if we can't, uh, we're reaching out to others as well, and we will. We had some initial foundation support in the early days. We now have to demonstrate that uh, this is a good project for us to, to uh, move forward on. Uh, so with all of that, we hope to, to get moving on uh, on the construction and that sort of leads to another question brian that you know uh, we get, i get asked this all the time is how soon how soon can we get construction underway and the dentist operational and of course that really depends on 2024 and our ability to seek and get the pledges that we need in order to make this a reality but you know the timetable because you've been involved in the development of all kinds of different properties. What's your basic estimate for, uh, in terms of when we could actually, how long will it take to do all the very creative ideas that you have for this property? Yeah, sure. Uh, so from when you, John, tell me to go ahead. Uh, so i.e. the funding is at a point where you feel comfortable that we're gonna start construction. 
um, to when we're open to the public will be 24 months. Within that 24 months, you have um, everything from permitting, getting the architectural plan and finalized, although we're gonna do some of that initial work now, we will need to finalize the plans once we go through the permitting process, you know, zoning, um, all those uh, entitlement things that are important to get a development launched. And then we start construction. And this is a huge historic renovation with some structural needs. Um, this building has been vacant for over 20 years. And I would say from my assessment of the building, it was pretty, uh, neglected uh, for many years before that, uh, let's just say. So um, it's going to need a lot of love and that's just going to take time. So um, we anticipate a hard construction time of uh, around 15 months and then um, a few months to get all the final bits and pieces together and the technology up and running, the staff trained to work with them. Great. Well, I think 24 months sounds very ambitious and I think, and I love the idea that we could give the go-ahead to go forward. Um, the question of whether we need to raise every penny before we start construction, I don't think we need to, but part of that's gonna be up to Brian as well, because some of it will be, we'll be making a, a judgment. I think if we raise a certain X percent of the money, we ought to be able to move forward and start construction on the, on the place itself, and feeling fairly comfortable that we can raise the remaining. But that's why next year is gonna be so important. Uh, everybody who's watching this, there are several ways in which you can help. Uh, there, I, wanna, I don't wanna leave out an important financial component part. I mentioned the pledge. That pledge could be 100 bucks, 500 bucks, 1,000, 10, 20, 500,000, whatever. Um, and it will not be delivered until we aggregate the money. And at that point, I will be back to everybody and say, okay, now's the time to start fulfilling your pledge. Uh, and that'll be at least a year away, uh, it would seem to me. But in the meantime, we have operational costs. The fact is that trying to keep this building healthy costs anywhere to, from five to $8,000 a month. And so we have these expenses, including a mortgage payment um, on the building itself. So we have to raise operational monies. So some of you, if you're on my mailing list or you're on this email list, you're gonna get a request. And we need the 50 bucks and the 100 bucks and, and bigger, frankly, in order to maintain the building you know, such that we, uh, you know, we don't have the ceiling fall in and water, rain and snow and all the rest. I mean, it's so, you can't imagine all the different kinds of costs that are involved, but Aside from mortgage, there's the insurance, and that's not cheap. Uh, you have to do accounting. Um, you have other kinds of expenses like snow removal. Um, we're having to repair things all the time to keep the building, again, to keep the roof intact. So uh, we have uh, just these variety of expenses that come up that we have to take care of. And it may not sound like a lot of money when you're talking about a big project like this, but believe me, I don't want to dip into capital, I wanna just use monies that are set aside for operational expenses. So I'm gonna put another pitch in for that uh, as well. Um, the, uh, I think we answered the schedule questions we got from Dave, Michael, Frank, Jim, Josh, Catherine. I mean, a lot of questions on scheduling because Marianne, Chuck, Aline, uh, Kimberly, John, Wilfred, um, ZP and Zach, they have very similar questions and I hope we've answered them. I'd like to see us get started right away, but obviously it's gonna take a little bit of time to raise the funding. Um, let me move to some of these questions that came online tonight and feel free to click in Q&A if you have another one. Um, will there be a kitchen in the building? I guess that's a question going back to the food issue. Brian, uh, you're muted. There. Yes, absolutely. There'll be a, a full kitchen at the building. Um, it's going to be underneath the concession stand, actually. So it's going to be an open kitchen into the uh, restaurant space. Yeah, that was a question from Nancy, who also asked, will you do paid educational classes, i.e. a director, to enhance a week of four films by that director? 
Um, that I get is that a model you're using now at Row House? I'm not quite sure what the question. I, I mean, I could interpret it a couple different ways. Like, are is it like the customers? buys a pass and that includes an educational piece to it um, we haven't really done that in the past doesn't mean we can't do it in the future uh, some people do that like um you know hosting like i can imagine elaine hosting a film class of greatest films from the 1950s and her you know walking people through it um that kind of thing would be great um but as far as like you know doing themes and stuff uh, is not really what we were intending to do here um, that's what we do in Lawrenceville, but um, I don't think that's what our intention is here. Right. Um, have you done studies yet on your audience reach? Uh, I know. I know we've talked yes. about this being a destination theater. The idea yep. is that this is not just for one community. We're on a T line. Um, we are able to reach out to lots of different communities, but the idea is that just as people go to Lawrenceville from Mount Lebanon, we'd love Lawrenceville folks to come to Mount Lebanon to experience something new and different. Is that possible, Brian? Yeah, the job's not too bad. I do it often now. So um, it's, it, so to answer your question directly, absolutely. I'm a, I'm, you could say I'm a little bit of a statistics nerd. Uh, we track every single thing that we do. If anyone runs a credit card information through me, I know where the zip code is. And we do a lot of work actually with that to understand what our audience is and where they're coming from and how much money they're spending. And um, what we found too is uh, that, you know, a lot of businesses like Mount Lebanon because of the uh, perceived wealth within the community. Uh, but the way I look at it, it is uh, Mount Lebanon is pretty eclectic uh, financially. And then the area around Mount Lebanon is also pretty eclectic financially. Uh, the fortunate thing is in the movie business is we are uh, very inexpensive entertainment venues. So, um, you know, this is not going to see Taylor Swift for a thousand dollars per person. We are, um, you know, you're someone's able to come from anywhere and spend, you know, twelve dollars and have a very unique, interesting, um, you know, experience where you kind of transformed into a different place. And that actually expands our audience quite a bit. And so our challenge is, is twofold is one is getting people off the couch. Like how do you, you know, everyone, all the films we're showing, half of them are on Netflix. How do you get someone to, you know, get off the couch into our theater? Uh, and that's my challenge is through experience and my team is, does an amazing job of that. Uh, the second challenge is, you know, how do we compete with the two AMCs just down the street and, you know, or the Cinemark down the, down the way. And the answer to that is uh, we're just going to be a completely different experience. Um, Sure, if you want to see the Marvel movie, AMC is great. If you want a, a, a romantic date, come to us, come to the dentist. Great. Um, Jacinta is asking the question, does the mixture of a for-profit and not-for-profit put any grant money at risk? Um, I think I tried to answer that earlier, but just to be clear, we have consulted with, uh, with attorneys on this whole issue and nothing we do no way will we structure anything with Row House that puts money at risk, either grant money or non uh, ta or, or tax deductible uh, contributions to the dentist. In the end, we own the building. And so uh, if for some reason Row House up and left, we'd still have the building. And so we're not going to, and of course our the, the whole design here and, and Brian, you can speak to this because I think you've talked about the fact that this is not a unique relationship. There are other kinds of relationships between nonprofits and for-profits. There are lines you have to follow, there are keys, key rules you have to follow, but we're doing everything in consultation with the uh, nonprofit experts and the nonprofit attorneys who have advised us on this. And, um, and Jacinta and anybody else, you know, we're not going to put anything at risk. We really will not. Brian? Yeah, yeah and uh, there's there are some examples. The Texas Theater being one of the more famous ones. Um, that's actually the movie theater where uh, John Wilkes Booth was captured. That's their claim to fame. But it's also an amazing movie theater. Uh, they um, had the same structure, the same exact scenario where they had that. I, I think you met Lee Harvey Oswald. 
Lee Harvard Oswald, thank you. <laughs> said John Wilkes Booth, uh, wrong president, <laughs> wrong era. <laughs> there was a fair. movie theater back in Lincoln's day. I'd be a little yeah. surprised. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. So it, um, Lee Harvey Oswald was captured. So it has this, it, it's a beautiful building and it was set, sit vacant for a long, since the 80s, I believe. Nonprofit bought it, couldn't do anything with it. And um, they kind of came up. This is actually a very similar path to what's happening here. Um, and it's an amazing place now. Um, the argument for this relationship is that us as a nonprofit or as, as a for profit operating entity, uh, our goal is to sustain ourselves without foundational support from the operational side. And so we we live off a of ticket and food sales, not grant money. Um, that actually frees up the grant money to do really truly grant things, not to pay salaries, but to you know do certain kind of programmings and community events that are really beneficial to Mount Lebanon. Um, right. And so, and not only in the asset, obviously, is a key piece of it. Um, we had a question, let's see, about the current mortgage. Uh, how much is the current mortgage? I believe our monthly payments are in the three hundred uh, dollar amount on the current mortgage. Um, I can get back on that very specific number. As I said, I'm trying to answer every question you ask. Is each board member putting up X amount of money? How many board members do you have? Well, we have eight board members. We've not done that part yet. Um, my hope is that each board member will make a, a pledge. Um, I can tell you the Delano certainly will. I can't speak for the others yet, but uh, that would be something we anticipate. And another person asked a similar kind of question. Have we secured any large pledges in the past year? And no, the answer is no, because we haven't started to do that. We've been spending, frankly, the last year, two years during COVID, working with Brian to try to develop the project that we just announced a month ago and that we're talking about today. Um, but we have every hope that we can get large pledges in the excess of $50,000 and more. Um, and that is our, with this announcement and with this particular program, so that people would know the details, we are, I think, getting ourselves ready to go out to certain individuals in the community. And even if we don't come to you directly, uh, those of you who are watching, know that we want your pledge. If you're willing to pledge $1,000 or even more or less, we'll take it. And of course, we definitely need checks written for operational funds as well. <laughs> I apologize. For some reason, I got something in my throat. Um, uh, this individual is indicating they're a member of the Bryn Mawr Film Institute. And that's where the paid educational courses are. I know. One of our board members has looked into that, and I think, uh, Brian, you're probably familiar with that. I think that's where that paid educational course qu question came from. Um, Josh asks, aside from direct donations, how can interested community members get involved? You know, we're always looking for help. We've got some tremendous volunteers. I'm gonna thank a few of them in a few moments as we wrap up, uh, but the fact is, Josh, I would love you to get in contact with us at, I believe it's info at dentistheater.org. If you go to the dent, it just type in dentist theater and go to our website. You can see contact information. Um, very much love to have individuals. If you can help us perhaps with raising money with our programs, because we're gonna continue to do some Pittsburgh perspectives programs on issues important to the community. Um, if you want to, you know, I'm, we, we, we need to grow our board. We're looking to do that too, just to be honest about that. Uh, as we've turned a leaf and hopefully enter a new day, we need, uh, I'm, frankly, I'd welcome back some of the older board members who were there in the past. I, I, uh, I just want a commitment to the vision, which is that we want to try to make sure we can reopen the dentist in collaboration with Row House. And I think we, I think, I think we're on the right path. I hope, 
folks have enjoyed the conversation that we've had. Let me make sure that we've answered. Um, when will the quest for donations be rolled out? Very soon, before the end of this year. I know we're going to come up on the holiday season, and I always run into people saying you can't do this, you can't do that. Um, but I think we want we will be reaching out directly uh, very shortly. And and frankly, with respect to the operational donations, the fifty bucks, the twenty five bucks, the hundred bucks that everybody watching this tonight can contribute to, uh, that we will be uh, sending a, I know a mailing out and an email out to people. Once you're on our list, I think we have everybody who's watching should be on our email list. So we'll make it easy. There's a way to donate. There's the QR code. There's all that stuff. Um, but we do need help on that score as well. Let me make sure that uh, Jackie asked about construction, and I guess I didn't answer this. Is there any effort being made to restore rather than rebuild? I'm not quite sure what the distinction there is. I think it's pretty clear. We did not want to go back to the to the miniplex era of you know of of the 1990s, the last years of the dentist. Uh, the original dentist board thought <clears throat> one large theater would be sufficient, but I think for economic reasons. Brian's plan makes a whole lot of sense. And uh, I think, uh, unless you have something to say, Brian, I think that's what we're doing. It's kind of, I mean, it's it's both a combination restoration as well as a rebuilding uh, inside. Brian, anything to add on that? A little bad, so if I come spotty, I apologize. Um, you froze for a minute. Um, go ahead. Yeah, there's no restoration in terms of historic value left in the building. It was, um, from my understanding, it was been gutted so many times over the years. Um, if you walked in there now, there's nothing. Um, so there's no seats, no, no anything that remnant. It's an old theater. There's not even carpet. So it's 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 reimagined. Oh, Brian froze on us. I don't know why we're losing him. Um, Brian, you're frozen. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna move ahead and wrap up. I think I want to make sure we've answered all the questions. Basically, um, Susan points out something that's especially true, and I want to acknowledge this. She says, "I appreciate you doing this tonight. I do think you are going to struggle gaining trust of the community again and getting donations, especially large ones." but I hope it works. Well, we do too. And as I say, I mean, we've turned a corner, we've got a, a brand new vision, we've got new people involved, certainly um, with uh, Brian and Row House, uh, this is going to be something uh, brand new for the community. And I think that I'm hoping that a buy a program like this where we answer questions as directly, um, that's very, to me, I'm hopeful uh, that that will encourage people to come back again and to uh, really help support the dentist as we move into 2024. Uh, so thank you, Susan, for that question. And Marianne asks, is, will there be transparency, sharing of designs as the project develops? And the answer is absolutely. As long as I'm involved in this project, everything is going to be out there for you to know, for the public to know, and particularly for our donors to know. Those who make pledges have every right to see and to understand exactly what's going on. And I, we wouldn't be working this relationship with Brian and Rojas if we didn't feel that they shared the same commitment to transparency uh, as well. Um, so that's a, a, another uh, good question. And then uh, <laughs> Jim says, bravo. Thank you, James. I appreciate that very much. Uh, he's, he's uh, watching from Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, again, I'm amazed when I look at the list of people who've contributed over the, over the years, we've got a number of people who are from outside the Pittsburgh area and we very much appreciate that. Um, Brian, are you able to be back with us? Oh, absolutely. Okay, now we can hear you, good, good. Yeah. So I wanna give you an opportunity as we wrap up. We promise folks no more than 60 minutes. Um, we're, we've recorded this. This will be available online. 
at our website and Facebook, I believe. Uh, please do take a look at the Facebook website. Like us, I think they tell me to say. Um, always appreciate it. Uh, Brian, uh, any final words to uh, the remaining viewers? Yeah, I mean, I think the best thing that we could say is, um, you know, at least from our perspective, uh, we say what we're going to do and we do it. Uh, so um, I know a lot of people have been, uh, I think you're going to see what we're doing at the Hollywood over the next six months to year and what we've done in Lawrenceville and what we've done with our other projects. And, you know, I think this partnership is really going to, um, you know, take this project to where it needs to go. I, I fully understand that it's, it's been 20 years uh, that, you know, it's been sitting vacant as it is. And I'm actually just thankful that it is exactly where it is right now, because, um, you know, if it was a, if it was torn down for a parking lot, or yes, it's ten thousand dollars a month to maintain this building. It's easier to tear it down. Um, we would be having a very sad conversation right now. So the you know, so I, I see this as an opportunity to move forward, and I'm just really excited to be a part of it. Well, we're absolutely delighted to be partnering with you, uh, Brian. I think we've answered. I hope all the questions that have come in. Uh, feel free, however, to send more questions to info at Dennis Theater, and remember, it's spelled the old-fashioned English way, T-R-E, not T-E-R at the end. I don't know why that is. <laughs> it we'll change that. We'll change yeah, that. We, we do need to change <laughs> that. Info at DennisTheatura.org, or go to the website, www.DennisTheatura, again, R-E, dot org. Uh, let me thank a couple of people who helped make this program possible. Obviously, Brian Mendelson. Uh, for giving his time this evening. We really appreciate it. Uh, Rich Crean, who helps us all the time on production, very much appreciated. Marianne, Mary Ellen Muth, who uh, provides our part-time administrative as assistance. We really appreciate that. Our board and committee volunteers, Georgia Connell, uh, Jane Delano, Susan Henry, Doug Mitchell, Jay Patrick, Elaine Wertheim. Uh, these folks were particularly helpful on this particular program as they are on so many others, along with our other board members. So uh, thank you everybody for taking time to be with us this evening. We very much appreciate it. And we look forward to your help and support in both the operational expenses and, I, and really we need to think long and hard about pledging because that's going to make the difference as to whether we can see the dentists really become part of Row House Cinema's great operations. So thank you again. Brian, thank you, and everybody have a wonderful evening. Do stay in touch with us. Again, I'm John Delano. It's been great to be with you tonight. <laughs>